Hey guys, it's Miss Johnson and I'm here to bring you the notes for our section 9.2 which is on logarithms and logarithmic functions. At the top of your notes page it's looking at the function says consider the function of the graph y equals 2 to the x and its inverse. Since exponential functions are 1 to 1 then the inverse of the exponential function of y equals 2 to the x is also 1 to 1 or is also a function. And remember think back to finding inverse functions and we find inverses by switching the x and the y. So now what we're looking at here is we have an exponential function and what happens when we switch the x and the y and get its inverse. So I started with the function that looks like y equals 2 to the x. Now I'm at the function x equals 2 to the y. Okay, but what does that look like? What does it mean to take the y root of something? We know about second roots and third roots and fourth roots, but what does that mean is what we're looking at in this chapter, chapter 9. Um, so the original function that we had was y equals 2 to the x, and it gave us this graph right here. Now again, when we find the inverse, we switch the x and the y. So all of the x's were switched with the y's, and that gave us these points here. That gives us this graph. You can also think back to chapter 7 when we talked about inverse functions and how they were reflected over the line y equals x because what we did is literally switch the x and the y. So that's where that reflection comes into play and that's what those graphs look like. This was the exponential and this one was its inverse. So now what that means is these things are called logarithms. It says the inverse of function y equals b to the x is x equals b to the y. I switch the x and the y. y is now called a logarithm of x. y is a logarithm of x. And the way we write that is y is equal to the log base b of x. In equations like this, the b was the base of your original exponential function. This thing over here was the exponent in your exponential function, and this thing here was the answer in your exponential function. So b was the base. The new answer was our exponent because we've switched them and solved for the other part. And now the answer that was original is in the question. So we're going to practice writing back and forth between exponentials and logarithms. So let's start with going from exponential to, or from logarithm to exponential. So in a log function, log base 8 of 1 is equal to 0. What I know is that this right here is my base. It was raised to that power and it equaled that answer. So what that means is I have 8 to the 0 power, which is equal to 1. That would be the exponential form. And we all know that any number raised to the zero power is one. And that's a good point about these. You can always check these using your calculator. So if you're curious whether you're writing it correctly or not, use your calculator and see if you figured it out the right way. Again, log base two, base two, means two is my base. It's raised to that power and it gives me that answer. So two to the negative fourth power equaling one sixteenth. And in this case, if you plug it into your calculator, you will find that 2 to the negative power is, in fact, 1 16th. One more time. Again, these are logarithms. So we switched the x and the y, and now we're solving for the other part. So 4 was the base, 2 was the power, and this gives me the answer. So 4 raised to the second power of 16. We all know that 4 squared is 16. So the log base 4 of 16 is 2. Okay, so now let's go the other direction. Let's take a look at writing them in logarithmic form. So now I have a base of 10. This is my base. This is my power. This is my answer. So if I'm writing this in logarithmic form, that means I have the log base 10, because that's the base, of 1,000 is equal to 3. Log base 10 of 1,000 is equal to 3. For part B, now 9 is my base, and 3 is my answer, and this is my power. So I have the log base 9 of 3 is equal to 1 half. And we can check that in our calculator. 9 raised to the 1 half power would give you 3. One more time, 
the base here, I have 125 to the one-third power equaling 5. The base here is 125, so the log base 125 of the answer, which is 5, is equal to the power, which is a third. Log base 125 of 5 is one-third. So going back and forth from logarithms to exponentials. Now in number three, it says evaluate each logarithmic expression. So I'm going to start with the log base 2 of 64 is equal to y. Well, I know that 2 is the base. 2 is the base. I know I'm raising it to some y power, and I want it to equal 64. So this is where I'm going to get on my calculator, and I'm going to plug things in. 2 to what power gives me 64? And you will find out that y to the when y is equal to 6, 2 to the 6th power is 64. If I take a look at part B, now I have the log base 3 of some of 81 is equal to y. So here I have 3 to the y power is equal to 81. So again, I check things in my calculator. I try 3 to the 3rd, 3 to the 4th, 3 to the 5th, see what I get. And it turns out that when y is equal to 4, 3 to the 4th power does in fact give me 81. One more question like this. Um, now I'm looking at the log base 4 of 256 equaling some number. So I want to look at the 4, raise it to the y power, and figure out when that is equal to 256. So again, I try. 4 to what power gives me 256? That would be the 4th power. 4 to the 4th power is 256. So let's just look at some properties of logarithmic functions. These are all of the properties that I know that my logarithmic function has. I know that the function is continuous and one-to-one, -one, meaning it doesn't stop. It's a continuous function, unlike those rational functions where we had breaks in continuity. Here, this one is continuous. One-to-one -one just means that it's a function. The domain is the set of all positive real numbers. The y-axis is an asymptote of the graph. The range is the set of all real numbers. So that's where those have switched from the exponentials. In exponentials, we had domain being all reals and range being all positives most of the time. And then the graph contains the point 1, 0. That means the x-intercept is 1. So those are some properties that we have of logarithmic functions. Let's take a second. Remember, you can always pause the video if you need to to, to write those down. Let's take a second and look at the next example, number four. In example four, now I'm solving the log logarithmic equation. I want to look at the log base four of n equaling five halves. So now take my base, my base is four, raise it to the five halves power, and it's going to equal n. That's four to the five halves is equal to n. Well, I can plug that into my calculator. When I put 5 halves in as a power, just make sure you put parentheses around it. So I'd have 4 to the 5 halves power, which is 32. 32 is my n. In part b, now I'm looking at 9 to the 3 halves power is equal to x. I have the log base 9 of x is equal to 3 halves. So I want to know 9 to the 3 halves power, what does that equal? 9 to the 3 halves equaling x. And again, use parentheses when you plug that in, and you'd find out that 9 to the 3 halves is 27. So 27 is my x. So moving back and forth from exponential to logarithmic. Now we're in logarithmic, and we want to go to exponential. So log base b of 121 is equal to 2. So now I'm missing the base. I know that the base, whatever it may be, was raised to the second power and that it was going to equal 121. Oops, 121. So b squared is equal to 121. Well, we know how to solve this. Take the square root. When I take the square root of both sides, b is going to equal 11. Okay. So um, that's going to take us to the end of our video for today. Don't forget to go back to Schoology and take that quiz. Thanks for listening, and have a great night.